So we have some big time updates on the Yankees ace Garrett Cole. He has officially opted out of his contract, but I'm going to explain what exactly that means going forward. Anthony Rizzo, he's probably not going to be a Yankee moving forward. Cody Bellinger, we have an update on him and so many other players. So if you like these kinds of videos, do me a favor, stick around and hit that subscribe button. Also, just a quick reminder, recap is brought to you by SeatGeek and Underdog Fantasy. Use code fuzzy. Before we talk about Garrett Cole, Anthony Rizzo and the Yankees, as well as there's a breaking update on Jock Peterson and also Yoan. Mankata, who was a superstar in 2019, Jordan Montgomery, J-Mo, gave a nice little F you to the Diamondbacks, and not the Diamondbacks specifically, like his teammates or anything like that, but the owner, Ken Kendrick, he officially opted into his $22.5 million option for 2025, and I say it's an F you because a few months ago, Ken Kendrick, he said that he's the reason why Jordan Montgomery was given so much money and that it was a horrible decision to give a guy all that money considering how bad he was, and if you forgot about that, roll the tape. If anyone wants to blame anyone for Jordan Montgomery being a Diamondback, you're talking to the guy that should be blamed. I brought it to their attention. I pushed for it. They agreed to it. It wasn't in our game plan. And looking back, in hindsight, a horrible decision. It's our biggest mistake this season from a talent standpoint. At this point, I'm just hoping that Jordan Montgomery has a pretty good first half and gets shipped elsewhere, or maybe he stays with the Diamondbacks and he does what he was supposed to do because at some point, I felt like he was making too many excuses. Not that it's okay for an owner to throw a player under the bus like that, but Blake Snell corrected his mistakes after missing spring training. J-Mo, again, I thought it was kind of excuses towards the end of the year. Real quick though, staying with the Diamondbacks, they have officially picked up the option for A. Eugenio Suarez, but Jock Peterson, he opted out of his $12.5 million deal. Jock was was a straight up mercenary last year versus right-handed pitching. He had an almost 400 on base and a 151 OPS plus. But again, this was strictly against right-handed pitchers. He was a platoon bat. That's why I call him a mercenary. He's not someone who's going to be able to hit lefties. So if a team needs someone who's only going to mash righties, Jock Peterson is probably going to be your best option this offseason. I mean, not named Juan Soto, but... Juan Soto is in a different stratosphere, let's face it. There's a reason I just brought up Juan Soto because we know he was on the Yankees and same with Garrett Cole. Now, hear me out. Garrett Cole did opt out of his contract, but that doesn't mean that he's not going to be a Yankee moving forward. So if you guys did not know, I explained this a few days ago, Garrett Cole can opt out, but the Yankees can actually void that opt out if they add one more year to the end of his contract. He would be getting $36 million in 2029 and that's when he's 38 years old. So I don't believe that Brian Cashman is going to hold a 38 year old season against Garrett Cole considering he's still pretty much in his prime for the next few years I don't think they're going to cheap out over one year but again Sunday will be the final day that the Yankees can tack on that one year contract extension and if they don't Garrett Cole he, he'll be a Rocky. The Rockies are going to offer him $70 million a year. If you guys can't tell, I'm being a little bit dramatic. But also, speaking of other teams, Garrett Cole technically cannot talk to other teams before tomorrow's deadline. The Yankees have to avoid it or opt in. Until then, Garrett's kind of just a no man's land waiting. Anthony Rizzo has officially had his $17 million option rejected by the Yankees. He still will get $6 million from New York. He's going to get $6 million to play for another team that is called a buyout. Now, Anthony had a monster 2022 season with 32 home runs and a 130 OPS plus. He also had eight RBIs that postseason. Then a Tatis collision at first base kind of ruined his momentum. Now, Yankees fans, delusional Yankees fans, I will say, have said that Tatis did it on purpose. No, it was just a normal baseball play. Now, in terms of what the Yankees gave away for Rizzo, the only guy that we really have to talk about is Kevin Alcantara or Alcantara. I keep forgetting how to say his name, but he had five home runs and seven stolen bases with the near 850 OPS and 35 AAA games for the Cubs last year. So do you guys think in your heart that the Yankees could potentially lose this trade in the long run? Do you think that Kevin can be a future star? Let me know in the comments. And also, if you're a Yankees fan, let me know what you make of Rizzo's tenure with the Yankees. Do you think that it was successful or do you think that the last two seasons kind of tainted his, I'm going to put this in air quotes, legacy in pinstripes? Another team that plays in pinstripes, the White Sox. We know that their home uniforms, they got some pinstripes on them. Yoan Nakata has officially had his option rejected as well. I don't know if you guys remember, or maybe you're just picking up baseball, but 2019 Moncada was a legit superstar. I'm going to give him that label like no BS. When you hit 315, that's pretty solid. But when you tack on 34 doubles, 
25 home runs and a 140 OPS plus again while hitting 315 at 24 years old that is a superstar season he was pretty good in 2021 as well he had a 375 on base and really improved his defense but ever since then he's really struggled to stay healthy and through the grapevine I've heard rumors that he's kind of selfish take that with a grain of salt I'm just a guy in his room recording these and these are things I've been told throughout the years granted he still hits the ball pretty hard he showed the 2021 chase rate stuff briefly he wasn't chasing at bad pitches this year but again it was brief because he only had what 40 plate appearances so he's going to be 30 years old would you take a flyer on Mankata for the right price honestly I could really see him fitting in with a team like the Padres but if they utilize him correctly obviously he's not going to be the third baseman but maybe a second baseman kind of guy that could happen if Haseon Kim leaves from one switch hitter to another Jorge Polanco is no longer going to be a member of the Mariners he is yet another Mariner second baseman to suffer the curse after hitting 213 he had his option rejected now I will say as the season kind of aged he did look a little bit better he had 11 home runs and a 310 on base percentage his final 55 starts which is better than his 290 on base for the entire season if I had to predict where Jorge Polanco is gonna go my best prediction is actually Chicago I'm not talking about Wrigley for his career in guaranteed rate field where the White Sox currently play now maybe this might not make sense if they get a new stadium in the next few seasons but in the current White Sox stadium guaranteed rate he has 18 home runs and a near 9 960 OPS in 53 games. To me, he's a thousand percent going to be a White Sox. We got a bunch of lefties coming up. We'll talk about Blake Snell in just a moment because, again, he wants a brand new mega contract, as the title says. But first, Cody Bellinger, he's officially picked up that option for $27.5 million. And he, that's smart to do so because he did not play well enough to try and opt out and get a multi-year deal like he was trying to get last year. He was still decent but regressed in basically every facet of the game of baseball. And to me, my biggest worry about Cody Bellinger is can he get back to 2023 when he almost had a 370 batting average against sliders? Again, that was in 2023 when he broke out and almost hit 310. This year, this past season, he went from a 367 batting average versus sliders to a 179 slider. He was chasing more often and he was and putting the ball in play so that's the biggest question mark we have for Cody Bellinger can he lay off the slider or if he does swing at it can he put it in play for once to absolutely no one's surprise Robbie Ray has opted into the final two years of his contract with the Giants now if you guys don't remember he came from the Mariners who gave him 115 million dollars back in 2022 so for 2025 he's going to get 25 million dollars 2026 same thing he's owed 50 million dollars for his final two seasons with the Giants he was actually fairly nasty in terms of the strikeout stuff last year when we saw him in his brief I think he had a couple games under his belt last year he did get lit up when he wasn't striking guys out so what do you make of Robbie Ray opting back in a lot of people on social media are saying have some pride you haven't earned that money but to that I say what are you talking about some of these opinions I've seen on social media are just absolutely wild now from one Giants pitcher to maybe a former Giants pitcher Blake Snell has opted out of his 2025 contract he was supposed to get 30 million dollars but he wants a multi-year deal and unlike Cody Bellinger Blake Snell actually earned the right to try and get a multi-year deal we know that he probably had the best start of the entire season throwing a no-no en route to having a microscopic 1.2 ERA and a 123 batting average against opposing hitters his final 80 innings with a whopping 114 strikeouts he's a two-time Cy Young winner he's going to be 32 years old and some pitchers they just age like fine wine but to me he has every right to not just get a big AAV going forward but have that AAV over the next four or five seasons he deserves security for all of the success that he's had I want to see that upstairs fastball with the devastating curveball in October I need it we talked about Ha Sung Kim earlier in the video and I was hinting at the fact that yes he has in fact opted out as well and it's pretty smart despite the fact that he missed a chunk of time this past season with injury according to baseball reference he was worth five wins in 2022 he upped that to six wins in 2023 after he almost went 20 40 that's 20 home runs 40 stolen bases with near platinum defense last season it makes a lot of sense I don't know if he's going to leave the Padres because it seems like he really enjoys playing there but again if he does leave maybe the Padres give that money to a Moncada or a Polanco because they got the most that a Profar after Profar really scuffled. Maybe they can rekindle the fire and get Prime Polanco or Mancata as a second baseman or a utility guy. What do you guys make of all these moves? 